Question 1. A head teacher surveys her staff to see when they take their main holiday. She knows that many people are likely to holiday in the UK and elsewhere in the world within the same year. The table below shows her findings. Which was the modal combination of destinations? By the modal combination, they mean the combination of two destinations that happened the most often out of any other pairing. So we're looking for the highest number within this table. If we look, that's this one here, 13, and that combination is Italy and London. Giving us answer C. Question 2. A head teacher surveys her staff to see when they will take their main holiday. She knows that many people are likely to holiday in the UK and elsewhere in the world within the same year. The table below shows her findings. London was the most popular UK destination. What was the percentage of travellers that went there? Give your answer to two significant figures. So we need to look at this column here. And we have the total, 31, and the total of all travellers, 116. If you want that as a percentage, we will have 31, the total that went to London, divided by 116, the total number of staff. To work that out as a percentage, we need to divide 31 by 116, then multiply by 100. So as a percentage, we have 26.724%. However, we need that for two significant figures. That's the first two figures here. However, we need to check to see if we need to round up or not. This number is greater than 5, so we do round up to 27 Question 3. A head teacher surveys her staff to see when they take their main holiday. She knows that many people are likely to holiday in the UK and elsewhere in the world within the same year. The table below shows her findings. How many people went to Cornwall and Devon, but not to Italy? So first we need the number of people that went to Cornwall and Devon in total. That's these two here. 15 plus 24 is 39 people. Next, we need to subtract the number of people that went to Italy. So that's 3 plus 6, that's 9. So we'll take away 9, and that gives us 30 people in total. Question 4. Pupils at Rydale High are asked which out-of-school activities they participate in. Predominantly, there are two groups of activities, arts and sports. Many pupils participate in both. The breakdown of their activities is shown below. What percentage of pupils take part in both netball and music? Give your answer to two decimal places. So if we look in the music column and the netball row, we're looking for the overlap between those two. That's here, four. Four students take both music and netball. So as a percentage of the total, we need four divided by the total number of students, that can be found here, multiplied by 100 to convert it into a percentage. 4 divided by 145, that gives us 2.75862%. We need this to two decimal places, so we're concerned about 2.5 2.758 and we can look at this place to see if we have to round up or not. This is greater than 5 so we do need to round up which gives us 2.76%. Question 5. Pupils at Rydale High are asked which out of school activities they participate in. Predominantly there are two groups of activities, arts and sports. Many pupils participate in both. The breakdown of their activities is shown below. Netball was the least popular sport, and graphics was the least popular art. Which is the most popular combination? We're looking for the highest number within this area of the grid, the overlaps, not the totals. So, we just need to look through and figure out which is the highest occurrence, and that's here. 13 for hockey and graphics. And that's our answer. D, hockey and graphics. Question 6. The results of Airtree Grange Academy Trust's Year 10 Mock GCSE exams for English and Maths are shown in the table below. In total, 336 participated in the exams. 
A cross indicates that there are zero entries for this location on the table. What number of pupils scored a grade 5 or above in both mathematics and English? So we need to find out which area has a grade 5 and above. For English, that is this one here. Anything below the line has grade 5 and above. And for mathematics, a similar line here. Anything to the right of this line has grade 5 and above. So we're looking at this region here. We need the total of all the entries in that table, which comes out to 132. Question 6. Six pupil premium students were given intervention sessions to help them improve science. They were given the same multiple choice test four times throughout the year. The table below shows the results each obtained. One pupil score decreased 20% between the first and last test. Conversely, one pupil score increased by 20% between the first and last test. From the options below, identify the two pupils. We're going to take each pupil in turn and increase their score from September by 20% to see if it matches to that of June, and decrease their score from September by 20% to see if it matches June. Once we've gone through all of the six students, we should have our answer. So, pupil A in September got a score of 75, and we're going to increase by 20% by multiplying by 1.2. That's 90. It's not the same as the June value, so we'll put a cross there. 75 times 0 0.8 is a decrease of 20%, which is 60. So this pupil is the one who had a decrease of 60%. If we look at the answers, we know that A is the one with the decrease, so either answer A or answer D are our potential options. So let's have a look at pupil E and pupil F in turn. So pupil E has a mark of 55 in September. Let's multiply that by 1.2, and that's 66, which is the same as their mark in June. So that's the pupil with the increase. So our final answer is A and E. We didn't have to do any of the extra ones, but if we'd have done A and F, we'd have found that F was 75, increased by 1.2 is 90, which obviously is not equal to 71. Our final answer, A and E. Question 8. The results of those taking GCSE ICT at Woodborough Community School have been compared for the last three years. The results for each year are shown in the table below, along with a breakdown of the number of pupils who achieved each grade. Select all the statements which are true for the table above. A. The year 2015 had the lowest proportion of students with grade 1. First, we need the total number of students in each year before we can calculate proportion. For each of these years, the totals are 108, 122, and 137, just by summing along the row. Okay. In year 1, 2015, the proportion of students who achieved a grade 1 is found in this column here, so that's 5. So 5 over 108. In 2006, it's 7 over 122. And in 2017, it's 6 over 137. If we calculate those, we'll find that we get approximately 0 0.046, 0 0.057, and 0 0.044. The question said the year 2015 had the lowest proportion of students with grade 1. Well, actually, that's false because 2017 has a lower proportion around 4.4%. That's false. For B, the proportion of students getting grade 5 increased each year. So we need to have a look at this, this part of the table here. Let's calculate the proportion for each year. That's 17 over 108 for 2015. For 2016, it's 21 over 122. And for 2017, that's 25 over 137. Those come out to around 0 0.157, 0 0.172, and 0 0.182, which we can see is an increase each year. This proportion increases from 2015 to 2016, and again to 2017. So true. 
C, the year 2016 had the fewest number of people scoring the highest grades, 7, 8 and 9. So let's calculate that. We're looking at this area of the table now. In 2015, we had 12 plus 13 plus 6 people scoring the grades 7, 8 and 9. That gives us a total of 31 students in 2015. In 2016, we have 10 plus 13 plus 6, which is a total of 29. And in 2017, we have a total of 11 plus 11 plus 9, which is 31. So 2016 having the fewest is true. Finally, that means our answers are false, true, and true. Question 9. A sixth form surveys its leavers every year on their intended destination upon completion of their final year at school. The results of this survey are shown below. Use the information available to establish the value missing from point J, the number of people going on to an apprenticeship in 2014. J is missing and there's a few ways to calculate this one. If we knew K, we could calculate J because this is the total, we just have to take away the rest of these values. However, to figure out K, we know that we need to figure out L and M first. So that's three things we need to work out. Alternatively, we could work out N by taking away these other values from the total and P in the same way, and then subtract those and nine from the total here to calculate J. Since the red box requires us to make two calculations and this requires three, we'll do the red box. So first, let's figure out N. We can do this by taking the total, 261, and summing up these four other numbers and taking that away. So that's 261 minus 221, which is 40. Similarly for P, we can take 450, add up these four, and take that away. That's 351, which gives us 99. Now that we've got N and P, we can take 189 here, take away 9 from there, Take away P and N, 99 and 40, which should give us our value of J, which in this case is 41. Question 10. Year 8 at Shenton Secondary were asked what colour high visibility jacket they would like for the end of year recreational activity. The PE teachers collected the results and as such they are split into boys and girls. The orders are shown in the table below. Select all the following true statements. A. A lower proportion of boys wanted a yellow jacket than girls who wanted a yellow jacket. To calculate proportion, we need to know the totals first. So I'm going to add a total column here. The total number of boys, we just need to add all those up. That's 104. And for girls, that's 93. Let's calculate the proportion of yellow jackets for boys and for girls respectively. So for boys, that's 10 over 104 is approximately 0.0962 and for girls that's 9 over 93 which is approximately 0.0968 so we want a lower proportion of boys wanted a yellow jacket than girls and this number is lower than the number for girls so that's true there are the same number of boys and girls we already calculated this before here and that's not true false more people wanted an orange jacket than a yellow jacket. So the total number of people who wanted a yellow jacket, that's 10 plus 9, is 19. And orange, that's 12 plus 2, is 14. So that is false. Our final answer, true, false, and false.